Good afternoon, everybody. David Schuster here on Take Action News, the third hour of our show, 2 o'clock Eastern Time. If you're listening or watching to us live, special welcome to everybody who's watching us live on Take Action News TV or TakeActionNews.com or ReactRadio.com. This is the show where we like to tell you what's going on in the world of politics and news and what you can do to influence outcomes. And in just a few minutes, we'll get you up to date on social media, what's been trending in social media in terms of uh, activism and how you can use social media to help your cause and take action online. But um, speaking of taking action, a fascinating uh, series of reports that have come out in just the last couple of days related to efforts by China to hack the U.S. government and to hack major corporations in the United States. You recall, of course, that the New York Times was hacked by uh, Chinese hackers uh, just a month ago, and several reporters had their information infiltrated by China. Well, it appears that what goes around comes around. And now Chinese officials are claiming that U.S. hackers have been repeatedly targeting China's Defense Ministry's website and a site belonging to the People's Liberation Army. Uh, the Chinese officials claim that there have been an average of 144,000 attacks per month on Chinese websites and government uh, websites uh, just last year. Now, obviously, um, my sense is that uh, China is um, inflating, <laughs> inflating their claims. But uh, the fact of the matter is, look, I mean, there are hackers in China. There are hackers in the United States. And this is, uh, this is essentially all-out cyber warfare that uh, hackers are engaged in. And as much fun as the Chinese might be having in infiltrating the New York Times, I know that there are hackers here in the United States who are happy to get even by infiltrating Chinese systems. And to talk about this, uh, just to our Washington audience and everybody watching on YouTube, Alan Rosenblatt, Dr. Digipol on social media, on Twitter. Alan, welcome to the program. Good to be here, David. So, Alan, about these uh, hacks going back and forth, uh, is there any validity, is there any truth to the Chinese claims that um, U.S. hackers are infiltrating Chinese sites? Well, uh, I, I probably wouldn't be surprised about it. You'll recall that we um, that I reported on this last summer uh, when we had Nick LeVay on the show, and the, the truth of the matter is that uh, the Chinese, among others, and it's important to recognize that it's not just the Chinese, have been... Um, hacking into American, um, uh, in D.C. especially, uh, systems for years, uh, for many years. We were, uh, when I was at the Center for American Progress, my colleague Nick LeVay was able to map out the entire Chinese operation. Over two years ago, he did this. So um, we know for sure that they've been doing this. Uh, and it ranges from hacking into systems outright to sending what we call uh, phishing emails where they'll send an email to you that looks like it's coming from somebody you know there's a link on it and when you click on the link they gain access to your email account which then allows them to send emails from you to other people as if you were there sending that malicious link around increasing the likelihood that other people click in and give access to their machine so m my understanding is that for quite some time all the major think tanks all the major advocacy groups all the major law firms and lobbyist firms in DC have been owned either at all times or at some times by the Chinese and other hackers but especially by the Chinese hmm, interesting stuff and by the way uh, coming up by this hour for everybody who is uh, listening to us uh, when we pause in just a couple of minutes and let our syndicated station join us in social media there's a controversy over something that has been a lot of people may have noticed on Twitter a hashtag called unite blue or at Unite Blue. Alan's going to explain uh, what that controversy is all about and why it is actually uh, more important than you may realize. And then later in the show, a very special guest, Congressman Alan Grayson, represents a district in South Florida. He's going to join us to talk about his efforts to protect Social Security and also where things are going with the sequester and the overall atmosphere in Congress for progressives. Uh, uh, Congressman Grayson has not exactly endeared himself to the House Democratic leadership with how aggressively uh, and how openly he has defended Social Security and made it an issue and circulated letters in Congress. So we will talk to him uh, about some of those efforts and whatever pushback he's getting back from Democrats. And, oh, by the way, if we do hear from anybody at MSNBC over the next hour, based on the segment that Daniel Marins did last hour, disclosing that um, MSNBC's Ed Rendell, former governor of Pennsylvania, has not been disclosing his conflict of interest on issues of Social Security that he talks about on air. If we hear from anybody from MSNBC or Ed Rendell, we will pass along their emails or comments or information, and we'll try to get some sort of comment. I have a feeling that they're not going to respond, but that is uh, just me. Uh, Alan Rosenblatt, in the uh, 40 seconds we have before we pause, what would you make of that segment? Well, I think it's really 
a problem across the board. You know, we've talked about Obama not allowing the revolving door of lobbyists in the administration, uh, but the comment about revolving door of Wall Street executives, uh, you know, the issue is not just uh, whether you're a lobbyist, but whether you're uh, involved in uh, a conflict of interest that has to do with what you do for a living, what you get paid for, versus what you're legislating or administering on the government side. And it's a problem across the board. On the media side, I think it's really, really important that we know where people come from, because people believe what they hear in, on the news, especially on Fox News. The left, the right believes everything they hear, especially on MSNBC. The left believes almost everything they hear there, although I think we're starting to put some chinks in those armor. Absolutely. Good point. We're going to pause in just uh, 10 seconds, let our syndicated stations catch up with us, and then we'll have social media with Alan Rosenblatt. You're listening and watching to Take Action News on We Act Radio. We pause just for a second.